Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the seventh session of this Lunch and Learn series. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land and those of the land that we are on, the peoples of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to the elders past and present. Today, we are looking at the award-winning Mordialic Freeway, Australia's greenest freeway. Lauren Rowett will be talking to Daniel Cole Morgan about the inspiration and process involved in using recycled plastic noise walls and the challenge of increasing recycled plastic content in an existing product. 5,700 tonnes of plastic waste was used in the noise walls on the nine kilometres of freeway construction. And that equals the plastic waste collected from around 25,000 households. So we're making a nice dent in plastic waste. This project has won two awards. Working closely with the McConnell Dow Decknell Joint Venture, they've received the Excellent in Environmental Outcomes from the ISCA Awards and were the winners in the Contractor Excellence category at the Infrastructure Partnerships Australia National Infrastructure Awards. Um, this is a 30 minute session again. We've got 10 minutes in that for questions at the end. We'll record the session and uh, thank you for attending. I'll jump straight in and hand over to Lauren and Daniel if they'd like to um, pop their screens back on. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, hi, Daniel, and thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, so that's a really impressive list of accolades. So I guess, first of all, congratulations to you and to the team. Um, to get us started, would you like to tell us your title um, and what your role was on the project? Yeah, thanks, uh, Lauren. Happy, happy Friday. Uh, I think the project should be proud of um, what it's been able to achieve. Um, I, I think uh, back at the time I was working on the project um, during the pre-construction phase. Um, I was the project director um, during the pre-construction where we went through our key approvals and the ES process. Um, and also during the procurement and tendering phase, those things sort of happened in parallel. Uh, and then um, during an early activity phase, we started design and um, I stepped back into the senior project manager role as we um, started construction. And I was looking after the southern section of the project during construction. Um, part of my responsibilities were to champion sustainability outcomes for the project. Fantastic. Um, so the Mordialic Freeway, obviously a really big project um, and had a lot of really great Recycle First outcomes, hence, you know, the label that's been given of Australia's greenest freeway. Um, we are talking specifically about the noise walls today. So the walls weren't actually originally in the design as being recycled plastic. So can you tell us a little bit about how that came about? Yeah, look, they, they weren't. Um, during our, um, our procurement phase, we... You know, we, we tried to set up our tender and our, our spec so that we were encouraging um, recycled and environmentally friendly products. Uh, in fact, in, in, our, um, in our spec, we had a requirement to meet uh, an ISCA score, Infrastructure Sustainability Council score of 65, um, which is a tough go for a, um, a road project. Um, so we set up the spec to try and encourage um, sustainability outcomes. Um, and, and we knew that um, plastic was being used for noise walls prior. Um, Penlink was a, a project, for example, that, um, that used uh, plastic uh, noise walls. Uh, during that uh, tender process, um, PACT uh, group um, made um, representations to our, our tenderers. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, probably weren't price competitive at, at that point. And um, the submission we got from um, McConnell Dow Decknell, who ultimately uh, we, we tended with and contracted with, um, included a Core 10 uh, product. And that um, Core 10 uh, product was uh, basically uh, rusted steel, um, had um, uh, uprights at, at about six metres apart, and uh, I think we didn't know exactly uh, how, how much noise wall we had to have uh, because that came out um, out of the EES process uh, after the tender period had, had actually completed. So after um, we actually uh, you know, got the submission, we, um, and we, we proceeded to, to start to design and build the, um, you know, the rusted um, steel solution. 
Um, but during that time, um, Pact Group were also making representations and, 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 and selling their ideas to our broader um, team and, and our executive. So our, our executive heard um, from them that this um, recycled plastic product uh, included a 30% recycled product uh, and, and was cheaper than other noise walls. Um, so the, um, the vision and, and, and the direction from our executive was for Mordial Treeway to, um, to explore whether or not um, this, this product was suitable um, for, for use on our project. So that's what we did. We, um, you know, we took the, the guidance and, and um, we invited um, Oz Group and, and Pact with McConnell Dow, Deck Mill um, and the designers um, to you know, to present to us at our um, at our sustainability committee, and at that time, which was uh, probably two or three months after the award of contract, um, they presented a um, a thirty percent recycled product solution to us. Um, and you know, we could have at that time just said, okay, um, tick the box, all right, let's do that, um, give us a price. Um, we didn't do that. Uh, what we did is we said, well. Okay, if you've done that before, and we know that you've done that before, what else have you got? Um, and they sort of bummed on and they, 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 they said, well, we're working on this other thing. Um, we're not sure we will get to, um, but let us come back to you. So they went away for maybe um, three months or so. And then uh, we had an, a further meeting and they, they came back and they said, we can do a 75% recycled plastic uh, noise wall product, uh, rotation modeling um, uh, uh, product. And, and they also went on to say, well, and not only is it 75% um, recycled plastic, uh, about half of that is with soft plastics. So not just your recycled plastic from you know, milk bottles and, and the like, but using glad wraps and clean film and, and these types of things, which is something that um, had not been done before. Um, and certainly at, at the scale, we're talking, you know, um, 30,000 square metres of recycled, um, of, of panelling for noise walls. So um, we said, yeah, we're interested in that. Um, we'd love to get involved in, you know, a world's first uh, type of um, um, solution. So that's when we started to work with them on, um, well, how much does it cost? Um, how do we, uh, what are the barriers? How do we overcome those? And how do we actually uh, get it to work? So, yeah, and that wasn't an easy thing either because um, uh, as it turned out, it, it was more expensive than the core 10 product um, that we had. Uh, and we have we had some specific requirements um, that we needed the, um, the product to achieve. So um, the outcome of the environmental effects statement was a urban design um, review panel. So we had to get things sort of certified and approved um, by independent urban designers. And, and we'd already presented to them and had uh, signed off from them uh, the look and feel of this um, Core 10 recycled steel product. And uh, uh, what we were able to do in working with um, Oz Group and, and Pact was to, to, to get a product that looked and felt like the Core 10 because it can be moulded in any sort of shape. So the shape that we already had um, in our tender, we were able to replicate and we were able to colour match and be able to um, go back to our UDEP panel and say, well, I think, um, I think we've got something that is environmentally better um, but it's also something that, um, you know, hits the same targets as your urban design response that you wanted to see. Yeah. Um, that's, so, so that's why it looks the way that it does, that kind of orangey colour with the corrugation in it, because it's modelling yeah. on that Corten steel. Yeah, so the, that rusted steel look, is, it's meant to look like that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that was a, um, a colour that was done for convenience to make it look like the rusted steel so that we didn't have to get a separate approval on, on, on the look and feel of that product. Um, the EES was quite specific around using muted tones and, and not yeah. taking away from the environment because it's a very environmentally sensitive area. Yeah. So yeah, they, um, you know, we got that approved and we didn't want to really change um, that approval. So yeah. it worked well actually. And, and that's 
ability of these products. Um, really, really cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's really impressive, actually, that they that the supplier went from you know thirty percent um, recycled content, which was quite you know had been done before, to a, quite a big jump to seventy five percent. And not only that, but to include a really problematic waste stream in that in those soft plastics. Um, so this is really a new product because it's got that much higher recycled content. So you would have had to go through a lot of different um, testing and approvals processes, I imagine, to get across the line. Um, what, what was that like? Uh, that, that was difficult. <laughs> um, the, um, the, the current Vic Grows, um or DOT standards at the time, they, they didn't allow for this type of um, material to be used as a, um, as a noise hall. Um, so we had to go through a um, what they call a type approval process, and we had to get that material approved for the use as a um, as a noise hall. Um, so there was a whole battery of tests that had to be done um, to satisfy DOT that this is a product that they actually wanted to. Um, at the end of the day, they're the end asset owner that they wanted to own and have as part of their suite of, of materials. You know, number one, they had to make sure that it actually did um, what it was meant to do, you know, retard sound and mm -hmm. have an um, acoustic uh, benefit. It needed to um, make sure that it didn't sort of melt over time. So the UV um, stability was important. Uh, if you can think about noise walls and what get hit by objects, so um, impact resistance, um, fire resistance, if a, you know, a, you know, a truck and an oil spill or a, a, a petrol spill, it needs to uh, meet all of those requirements. Um, uh, thermal expansion, if we've got a range of temperatures, making sure that it, it wouldn't, you know, you know um, tilt posts or, or the like. Chemical resistance, fungus, graffiti, light reflect, uh, reflection, um, it needed to have a design life of more than 30 years and it needed to meet all of the structural requirements around these noise walls. So its own um, self weight. So there was a huge battery of tests that needed to be done and, and the material ultimately um, passed all those tests. And, and I think what we were able to do, we had many that said own a DOT and their maintenance team, um, the project team, the designer, you know, the installer, the contractor, the subcontractor, all of us were in the room together to work through the challenges of, of getting this material type approved. Mm -hmm. and, and also um, probably without um, DOT in the room, working through the commercial arrangements to, to make sure that we had a product that we can um, afford to, to go through with. Uh, and, and ultimately at the end of the day, that's, that's what we did. Yeah, fantastic. You mentioned having everyone in the room there um, to get all all these things through. So tell me, was everyone on board or did you have difficulties getting some kind of some people from the project to sort of come along with you on the journey? Yeah, look, it, it wasn't easy first. You know, um, our first reaction was um, we know that this product is going to cost us more because it already been investigated during that procurement process. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, as, as a project team, we were probably the first barrier um, to entry for the product because we were saying, well, actually, i um, not sure that this is the best thing. But when we turned our mind to um, the longer term advantages of, um, of the product, um, the location of the manufacturing plant is in Karen Downs. It um, was, was very close to the project in that um, um, in that um, southeastern um, area of Melbourne, uh, the the recycle first uh, policies talk about um, you know local um, environmental and sustainable outcomes, uh, and what we started to think about was, well, this might be an initial cost, uh, but as we bring scale to the market and to the producer. And as we develop the industry, then market forces will naturally um, bring that price down and be um, competitive um, with the core 10 and, and certainly um, beat a concrete product on, on price. So we, we had to change our thinking from just us to thinking about the, the broader um, government um, targets and, 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 and direction and also how we could uh, build that, um, that market going forward. 
and, and there was also um, some resistance from our, our head contractor at, at times because it could have been, you know, we already had an answer. Um, it was hard to change. Um, the easiest thing for us to do was to just continue with what we had um, and even just continue with a 30% um, recycled plastic product. It was hard to go through a, a new process with a new product and, and do all of these changes and, and, and get all the ducks aligned to be able to move forward. So um, it, was, it, it took a fair bit of determination and commitment to, to get to where we, where we did. Yeah, absolutely. And such a great outcome from it as well. So definitely wasn't in vain. Um, we've been talking a little bit how, about um, how it was originally Corten steel and you mentioned concrete there as well. What are the, the differences or the advantages of the plastic versus those two? Is there, um, tell me about sort of the installation, perhaps um, the, you know, a change in process for the installation in a plastic versus um, those business as usual products? Yeah, so um, the, the natural thing to think about is the weight of the panel. Um, so one of these three by one meter panels is about, uh, pardon me, about, about 70 kilos. So it's, that's the plastic version. That's right. Yeah. So much lighter than, um, than certainly a concrete panel and, and even the core tent uh, product. So being able to um, even, even use manually handling techniques to be able to um, place those, um, many, many of them can um, fit on on smaller devices to get them to um, where you need them on the site. So um, the act of installing them um, was a big win, uh, productivity rates and the like in, in installing them and, and the risk away from the you know, problems of safety and manual handling were there as well. Uh, but also longer term in terms of uh, replacement. Uh, so if a panel breaks or, or fails in the future, it's much easier for that panel to be replaced um, from a maintenance perspective. Um, again, for the same reasons, because it's, it's modular, it's three by one, um, and, um, and those panels are, are much lighter. Yeah. So I don't know, you spoke about the price is a little bit more expensive, but it seems like that almost could be, you know, the, the cost of transportation and the cost of, the cost of um, uh, labor to actually install them seems like it could actually counteract that increase in, in the cost price to some degree, at least. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think as time goes on, we'll see market forces push those um, the price down. I think no doubt, um, you know, the issue for price with us is um, we weren't in a competitive environment with a variation to our contract. So um, that was part of the consideration. Um, and also um, research and development was actually incorporated into that price as well. So. Um, I'm confident that going forward that um, this product will um, be price competitive and have all of those advantages um, against the other business as usual products that don't have the sustainability benefits of, of this one. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and I'm interested to know as well, so it seems the business as usual products, your, your, your steel and your concrete, they're much, much denser, obviously, than plastic. So how does a plastic noise wall actually work versus those much thicker, denser products? Yeah, um, well, what it is, is um, if you think about um, double glazed windows, um, it's essentially the same sort of idea. It's, a, it's two layers of material with a void in between. Um, and, and the way it's manufactured is um, the same as they manufacture Easter eggs. They, they get an external mold and they put the material in the middle. Um, they heat up the mold and spin the mold and the material lines the um, inside of that, that mold. They cool it down, they break open the mold and um, then the Easter egg or the, um, the panel is, is available. Um, and, and, and I guess that's the, the beauty of it is you can, um, you can, you can make different molds. So, um, like we use the wave type pattern uh, on the Morty Freeway, uh, but that can be um, modified and changed to, to any pattern based on, on the mold that, that, that you create. And in fact, one of, the, one of the great things about that was the wave pattern that we had, had this void, had this gap between the steel post and, and the wave pattern. And that was actually producing, um, allowing noise to get through from one side of the panel to the other. Uh, and the recycled plastic noise walls, um, they were able to make a flat point on the, oh. on the 
noise panel um, so that instead of having a baffle plate, that could all be done in, in one solution because we could make the panel fit whatever we needed to. Oh, it's really interesting. So, so the way I understand it is that one side of the, the Easter egg kind of does all the vibrating and has all the noise, but it doesn't get passed on to the other side which is yeah. on the, the residential side, I guess. So if the noise is coming from here, this one uh, vibrates, but there's a void in between. So this one doesn't vibrate as much and that attenuates the noise coming forward. Yeah, yeah. it's so interesting. I never knew that about how noise walls worked before. Yeah, um, no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> learned a lot. Um, so, we've, so it's a new product. It's gone, you've gone through all the work. It's gone through all the testing. It wasn't allowed in specifications before is there a plan to update specifications to allow it like is there a future for this kind of a product or is this a very much sort of a one-off let's just leave it as, as it is no no this is um something that um has got a fair bit of passion from mrpb and, and the broader mtia family um, the mrpv uh, technical team has worked on a, a new standard um, with with dot in in the Austroads type of format so um, that's currently been approved by dot and it's in this space of um uh, in the process of being approved by Austroads. and um we believe it's, a, it's a, another first it's the first in the world where a recycled or a plastic noise wall has um standard has been developed so you know, kudos to, to the guys um, in, in the design and engineering team at MRPV for developing that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as you said, the moulds can so easily be changed to be any shape. Plastic can be any colour. So unlimited possibilities in what the noise wall could look like um, being made from plastic. Um, so given having worked on the project, given the option or the choice, would you continue to, to work with this product in the future? Yeah, yeah. Every every time um, the you know the the evolution of the product, even the time and the scale that um, we're able to to use it with, you know, ten thousand panels of this project were produced. Um, so there's a confidence that we can actually now get the production the production rates. You know, a couple of hundred uh, panels a, a day. Um, so very very confident that the supply is available. Um, and now that we've um, understood the challenges with installing and um, erecting um, the, the panels, I've got no problem in recommending the panel and, and this type of product to be used in, in the future and, and on other projects. And I'm sure it's been considered. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm conscious of time and I know we want to get to questions, but finally, knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently throughout this process? Or what is it that you wish that you knew going into this and getting this product across the line and into the project? Well, I think, um, yeah, part of the part of the challenge was was us and, and it's taking that courage and maybe we should have been a bit more, um, uh, a bit more willing to make a commitment early days uh, to, to get the product on, on, on board. Um, I, I would have, I would have liked to understand um, the production capacity of, of the material. Um, so there were some challenges that we had to upscale some production um, there at some stage. And uh, I guess we didn't, um, would have been nice to know at the start of the project that we were able to um, have a 75% recyclable product uh, during our tender period. And that would have um, saved a whole lot of, of dramas. Um, but I believe that the industry and, and the project in MRPV has come a, a long way in making this product market ready. So um, I think the project in itself and the development we've got is, um, is something that um, future projects can use. Fantastic. Thanks very much. So what I'm hearing is open-mindedness. <laughs> yeah, I think probably also um, planning to succeed. So yep. um, I mentioned in our spec, we, we, we wrote some things in our spec which were um, ambitious and, and we plan to succeed. If we hadn't have done that, we wouldn't have been able to encourage our, um, our contractor to, to go for this because they actually had an incentive um, in their contract if they hit their 65 um, points on their ISCA target, they were able to get a performance bonus. So um, mm -hmm. there were some things that we did that actually um, set us up for success and being able to move to this product without too much um, uh, problems with the contractor. Great, that's fantastic. Um, Cheryl, have we got some questions from the audience? 
Well, I think you're doing very well with um, all of the information. We've got one question, which I think you probably addressed a large part of it. And I've also got a slide here I'll pop up while you prepping this question, which shows a number of the noise wall designs. Um, but the question is, I understand that it is lighter than traditional noise wall materials with the quicker installation times a marked benefit. Did the project experience any cost and schedule savings from using this product? So I think you somewhat answered that. And if there are any guts, let's, yeah, maybe you can answer that now. That's the only question at this stage. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, as I said, the, the, the challenge with the product is it wasn't built into our original price. Um, and I think going forward, um, as I said, it would be price competitive. Um, so I think it certainly, uh, the challenges that we had on installation was that um, it was it was a um, you know we had to do a, um, testing of the of the mould and the initial product we had to do a mock test in the factory where it was developed so that we can build this you know two by three uh, panel wall and that's the reason why it was two by three because that was the original approval that we got for you know the spacing and the look of the panels from the design review panel. So we had to mimic um, that, uh, that design. So that there was a little bit of extra work that we had to do to, to make sure that that works. And then we had to do some prototypes out on the site. But once we got into full swing of production and installation, um, it certainly uh, beat the, the performance times that we were anticipating with the, with the core team. Great. Oh, another question. Sorry, I'll just have a look at that. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you for the presentation. You mentioned UV resistance requirements. Does this include the durability of colour? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, so uh, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not um, au fait with all of the, you know, the detailed um, requirements, but certainly we had to um, put the panel under um, UV cycling for I can't remember how many hours to um, to test that it, uh, it it didn't fade in colour. So um, the answer is yes, and um, and it passed that that test. And I imagine that that's does that is that colour testing you sort of for the life of the the panels because they're a lot have a lot longer life as well, don't they? Yeah. Um, so each panel here has um, got. 40 years life and um, you know, it's probably longer than you know other um, panels uh, and and yeah part of part of our type approval process that we've got from from DOT is to is to come back and check in that um, you know one two five and ten year frequency to make sure that the panels are performing as um, as expected oh fantastic um, okay, we've got another one. I understand this time you were asked to replicate Core 10. What else can designers or engineers do to see more sustainable walls going up? Well, it's it's great that you've got this um, this up, um, Cheryl, because it, it shows the, these two ones in the middle there. They're, they're plastic noise walls. So I, I think the limitation is really um, with the designer um, as to as to what they can imagine, because I, I think this product is so versatile um, uh, and, and obviously sustainable that, that you could mimic anything. Um, the, before the, um, the Mordialic Freeway, there was a, a trial panel that was put on uh, the, one of the off-ramps at the, um, the Monash Freeway. And it's, it, it was designed to look like concrete. And if you go there and tap on it, you wouldn't tell, and even that you can tell it's hollow, but you couldn't tell that it was not concrete. Um, right. from a, so mm. I think you could replicate anything. It's kind of the beauty of plastic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, I can see this becoming a um, product of choice and 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 a, a business as usual option going forward. Fantastic. Well, we are at one o'clock. Um, that's been a great session. I think you've, you've given people such a broad amount of information and it always seems with these ses sessions that it's about getting in early if you can, but also that cooperation and the teamwork and making sure you, you're working with everyone together, which is you know such a clear message every time. Um, thank you, we really appreciate that. Morty Freeway had so many initiatives and we've talked about a couple of them um, during these sessions. Um, next week, we are actually talking about 
recycled plastic pipes, which I know Morty put in as well, but we'll be talking to <laughs> the um, Simul, uh, someone from Simul, uh, about the pipes they installed on the Hallam North and Heatherton Road upgrades. So that will be next week. Sorry, we've got another quick question, which I hate leaving questions unseen. Um, just very quickly, we'll address this. Just a couple of thank yous. That's great. Thank you. Just let us know if there's anything, any more questions, please, once again, email the Ecologic Inbox, ecologic at roadproject.vic.gov.au. Um, you can jump on our website, which is on the Big Build website. And uh, next week, as I said, we'll be talking about recycled pipes. Thanks once again to Lauren and Daniel for a fabulous um, presentation, and it will be uploaded next week on our Knowledge Hub. Thanks again. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.